For four decades, Art Rooney's Steelers defined losing. From 1933 to 1971, they never made the playoffs. Often the most entertaining football in town was played by his sons and their friends in the backyard of the Rooney's modest house on Pittsburgh's north side. Art lived in that house till, till he died. Uh, meantime, the neighborhood had become a very rundown neighborhood. Do you know of an another NFL owner who wouldn't have been living on Ritzy Street somewhere in some palatial digs? But it shows what a guy of the people he was. The common man owner had what was commonly regarded as one of the NFL's worst teams. Even on the rare occasions when the Steelers showed improvement, things seemed to just blow up in their face. But in the early 70s, losing became a part of their past. Andy Russell and I used to wait for the roof to cave in every year because you know, we'd been up the Steelers too long, you know. Well, the thing I noticed was these guys didn't feel responsible for the history of the Pittsburgh Steelers. This was kind of a new athlete. Uh, I came in, I, I felt responsible for all the years of losing, but they didn't. You know, these were just great players that, uh, you know, they were single-minded in the sense that they were going to be as good as they could be and, and the hell with everything else. The Oakland Raiders have taken a 7-6 lead in a tough, tough football game that has featured nothing but staunch defense all afternoon. Hang on to your hat. The only thing about the immaculate reception was I didn't see it. I just saw a blur down the middle, that's all. I just got rid of the football down. I have no idea I got this horrible pass. I'm throwing a point. That gets cut out of the air. The ball is pulled in by Frank O'Hare. While I was laying on the ground, I heard this roar. All I could think about is, I must have done something great. I must have really put it in there anyway, you know. That's what I'm thinking. After singing the blues for so long, a team in its town began to make beautiful music together. Offense, offense, take that football all the way up the field. The Steelers of those 70s were as huge as athletes could possibly be. And this all came at a time when the economy was starting to decline, the steel mills were closing, and people needed something to talk about that was good. And the Steelers gave that to them, and so they were beloved. They loved us and adored us because we brought pride to the city for being a champion. Super Bowl! This Steel Town team cast itself in the mold of other Iron Will champions. Chuck Knoll was a disciple of Paul Brown. The ground attack had the power of Lombardi's Packers. The passing game went deep like Sid Gilman's great AFL teams. And the quarterback had the arm and attitude of Namath. Terry used to say things like, you can lose with me, but you can't win without me. But even Terry Bradshaw knew what really distinguished the Steelers from every team which had triumphed before them. If you said, describe the Steelers, defense. Oh, oh, they were mean. They were mean. They played with the ferocity of Butkus. And cool your ass off. And with mean Joe Green getting his points across in more ways than one, they dared to be even tougher than Butkus. He once spit at Butkus on the sideline. Butkus was hollering something. He walked over and spit on him. Butkus was standing there with this thing hanging down from the face mask, and I said, this is going to be the greatest fight in the history of the National Football League. And Butkus turns around and walks away. I tell you. That was the beginning of the end of the Pittsburgh Steelers' problems. Pittsburgh's going to the Super Bowl! Green on the field and Pittsburgh's going to the Super Bowl! By 1974, the Steelers were poised to win Art Rooney his first Super Bowl. The desire to get a championship for Mr. Rooney, that, that was our edge. It was something special. It wasn't about money, it wasn't about fame, but uh, to win that one for Mr. Room. Probably the most emotional time I had was presenting him the uh, Super Bowl trophy over and over and over. But in any event, he was uh, so respected in the league. He was a genuine gentleman, Art Rooney. An uncanny blend of power and grace the Steelers' style mirrored their Chiefs' personality. 
A decade of dominance eclipsed a lifetime of losing. Rooney won four Super Bowls in the 1970s. But even when his Steelers became kings of the football world, he remained a king of the fellas. He was a good, powerful man. He was a good king. Here's a guy that kept hundreds of $1 bills so that he could pass them out on the streets and give them to the poor people and so he could give them to kids. So you can imagine how he felt about his players. One of the coaches was on my ass all the time, you know, and uh, I remember he was standing there chewing me out and Mr. Rooney walked up. He jumped all over the coach, you know, so he says, he took a cigar out of mine, he says, this is a good boy, he says, you leave him alone. He was so generous, so gracious, so kind, that he, you, you just, people fell in love with him. Art Rooney. Boy, I love that man. I, I know you're watching, Art, I love you. You are always, always by me. I love you so much, thank you.